Melee oh tilt god. Stick. Okay, so I I made uh, I think I made, a melee with tilt stick. I oh. made Esam and MVD disgusted by putting one thought in their head. I said, yeah. "Can you imagine melee with Rar?" And they immediately were like, Ugh! and they just died. They're like, "No, it's so bad." I was like, "Yeah, I know. It'd be terrible. Everybody would be like, oh, everybody would be so busted. It'd be oh, great." Okay, so, so for the people at home, let's talk about what what is Rar. So Rar stands for Reverse Aerial Rush, and you'll see that actually implemented pretty commonly with these particular with some of these characters, right? And the idea is, and just imagine this with with your uh, imagine this with your hands. This is kind of a weird idea. Imagine dashing one direction, and then da and then as you're doing that turn the other way. So imagine your character model turning around. Now while your character's turning around, you can jump out of it and you'll keep moving with your back in the direction that you were initially dashing. So essentially, think of it as a way to use your backward aerials while moving forward. Super useful. Super, super useful. You know how commentators always say nice back air? Well, imagine that going forward. It's busted. <laughs> And uh, you're exactly right. We're going to see a lot of that. Ike's a character who utilizes those raw back airs so frequently, those raw moves so frequently. Same with Pikachu. Gets a lot out of that back air. Now, waits at the edge. Ike's going to go for that trump and immediately go for the back air. Such a great option, especially if your opponent's not buffering ledge options. Here's the follow-up. At the higher percentages, you can expect Ike to do up throw, usually into up air or fair, depending. But at lower percentages, until around roughly 60, Granted, that's all the completely ignoring weight and a lot of those other factors. You'll see a lot of down throw in the back air, down throw in the air, a lot of those other options. And sometimes you just don't even need the options. Just throwing the bread and butter fair bears and not to get the stock. Rekrizi's looking for that opportunity to answer back here. But we've seen from Slaps a lot. He's able to keep himself oh. alive, but there, a misplacing of a hitbox is going to get himself punished. Yeah, man. That's a big thing that people don't really understand about Ike is that he plays, he has this big sword, right? And you think he's all about swinging it? In actuality, it's a lot of grabbing. Uh, a lot of playing this running game, making sure that you can bait your opponents to choose the incorrect option, then going in there and getting that grab. But if you misface it against someone like Pikachu, you're going to see big punishes like this. Yeah, well, crazy. Like the, the range on how quick that forward smash is just ridiculous. It's quick, it hits far, there's like little recovery after it. Trying to find the perfect hitbox to punish that can be difficult, especially for a character like Ike. So, Slap's gonna need to find that that sweet distance to keep himself. Absolutely. I mean, we're back to this neutral state. You'll notice that this is where the mid range where Pikachu is really gonna abuse that projectile. And when you quick attack cancel and you get that jump right after, you get that nice combo game started and leads to great positioning, usually like this. Man, has Rexy turned this game around? He's been able to rack up so much percent, barely contested from Slaps, but he has to find a way to get the stock. At these high raise percents, Ike's going to be scary. Ike's going to be dangerous, especially when he gets reads like that. That Nair comboing straight into the back air and setting up great positioning for him. And now Slaps has the center stage. He's going to be good in, uh, finding tr his fair is going to be hitting true and catching Rexy. And then he chases him on the getup oh. attack, but no punish there. And now wow. he finds the forward smash waiting for him. He that was a great finish by Rexy. He lost the stock the same way, both stocks. Each time he put himself in a position where he's like, okay, so the final hit of my jab is going to connect. Each time he gets caught on the second part of his jab with the forward smash from Rexy, the spacing from Rexy has just been, well, I guess not so much the, the, the spacing from Rexy, but the awareness from Rexy to know that he was at a perfect distance to get that forward smash, mm -hmm. perfect each stop. Yeah, absolutely. And just great job of using it and, you know, not dropping your punishes. A, a big part that people don't really talk about is consistency, right? Yeah. It's so important to be consistent with your punishes, know exactly what you need to do. And that's why training mode is so important for people to go in there, dust up some, uh, you know, come up with some idea, brush up some ideas, yeah. and, you know, go online, take a look at some of these online resources. I mean, for instance, Serving Smash has a fantastic tool uh, for you to figure out any kind of combo that you could potentially want in yeah. all situations. Make sure you're checking them out at Serving Smash. Um, but let's get into this next one. Yeah, so I want to talk about one more thing of that last thing before we go in. So the, the, the end of that set all started because... Um, Slaps was going for a, a large read. He The first time he had done some damage to uh, Rexy on the side of the stage, he got Les Trump back air. He was going to go for Les Trump back air, but he gave Rexy the benefit of the doubt to roll on the stage because he got hit by the Les Trump last time. Yeah. And giving him that benefit, that benefit of a doubt gave Rexy the opportunity to take that game. So Slaps may need to choose for that, to use that option more often than not, to be more consistent with his kill options. I like that. So... Let's see, I mean, percentage-wise, this is about even. 
And now we're kind of... Okay, see, he was going for the ledge trump again. He was baiting him. He said he was going for the RAR, and then guessing that he would that Rexy would roll onto the stage, yeah. and Slaps would then get an F-Tilt punish. Yeah, I don't know. With an option like like Quick Attack, I don't think that he should be ever going for a, a read like roll onto stage. Why roll onto the stage when I can just Quick Attack like that? Yeah. So I think he should be going for that ledge trump every single time. Yeah. There should Un not be an uh, opportunity where he does not go for ledge trump. Until he is told not to. For instance, if there's an offered situation where Rexy just completely denies him and he gets and you see Slaps gets punished for it. I don't see any reason to do it. But that back air, perfectly placed, knowing exactly where Rexy is gonna do. Great job from Slaps to finish off that stock with the back air. That's such a great option for Ikes at those later percentages. It comes out quick, you can combo into it, you can roar into it. Ooh, big punish opportunity here. Takes stage control and an opportunity here. Yet again, the ledge, there's the nair. This is the way that you can deal with people coming back onto the stage from higher angles. Nair is great because it comes from above and starts going into the middle and below. And you get to cover a lot of those options. And Ikes, that's one of their bread and butter tools. Nair is a centerfold, a crux of their gameplay. That was a great mix-up to his recovery there. He got himself away from the, uh, the thunder that Rexy was looking for, Rexy was fiending for. Rexy is having a difficult time with taking this stock forward air, not going to do it just yet, however. This is where Ike gains the most benefit from Smash 4. He's sitting at 160, his opponent is just a little bit glassy, and Slaps right now has a good amount of tempo going into this next stock. He feels good. He feels like he understands what his opponent wants. As long as he avoids these situations, he could end the stock at a blink's notice. Honestly, a forward tilt will probably take off the stock from Rexy right now. Going yes. for the jab instead, getting a little bit more percent, but a, a nice forward tilt, a back here definitely. It's going to be it for Rexy. Rexy needs to find the stock. I think an up throw may do it soon. Slaps has it as long as he gets raw back air. He can get it from... Oh, yeah, that's it. I air. called it. I called no. it. Let's go. You said back air. You're right. <laughs> he can get anything there. That was ridiculous. He's an aerial. Dude, that's, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. When it comes to Ike, Ike is truly a character that benefits from the mechanics of Smash 4 yeah. so much more heavily than a lot of the other casts. Because he has access to rage, because he has sustainability, because he has durability, because he has F tilt, as well as smash attacks, this dude can get one read and destroy you. So true, and that's why we see a lot of those those higher tier players playing a character like Ike, something that you wouldn't have seen much in other games. Right? You don't think you'll see Brawl and you're like, oh man, look at all these top tier Ike mains in Brawl <laughs> beating everybody. <laughs> No, but you see stuff like that in Smash 4, and it's because of those those um, those things that we have in Smash, like Raze, like these hitboxes, like all the tools that Ike has been gifted. That's why we're able to see this. We're going to see if, I, if um, Slaps is going to be able to utilize those tools in this third game, or if Rex is going to be able to adapt. All right, so we're getting into this next one. We're going over to Duck Hunt. Um, what are some of the things that you think are unique that maybe some of these characters can utilize here? I, I know for certain that Rexy is utilizing this stage's very large bottom platform. He's going to be using it to get around, using it to immediately defuse any aggression from Slaps, and then get some of his own. He's throwing out these Thunder Jolts, and he's throwing out that mad damage. But Slaps has been keeping up with him. He's been keeping the tempo pretty pretty even, getting these, uh, these jabs here and there, getting these throws here and there. Rexy hasn't really utilized the stage as much as I would like him to. He's, he's at a stage where he can honestly play that keep away game. He can run in, he can get quick damage, get himself a lead, and then keep himself away. He has the speed, and he has the special moves to use. So I don't know why he hasn't. So at this position, f oh, oh is my exactly God. what he needed. Rexy had been getting shut down multiple times using quick attack to get onto the stage, and he knew, he made a guess that he was going, that we were going to be seeing get up, neutral get up from Rexy, and he just F tilted right there, guessing exactly where we're catching him. Yeah, super smart from that. Like, honestly, it was an option that we never saw. An option that we never saw Rexy do. And the one time he does it, Slaps is there to punish. Very smart from Slaps. And it's, it's sad because Rexy, this is his counter pick, but he's just not able to utilize it to its fullest. Slaps looking like he has all of the control right now. I'm not sure what Rexy can do to answer back. Since that game, too, it just seems like Slaps has got a grip on what Rexy is trying to do. Rexy is in a tough spot here. Uh, I mean, Slaps is clearly benefiting from Rage. He had the glassiness, and that's going to be it. Rexy making a great adjustment throughout the set, and slowly and deliberately and gradually, we saw this continuous adaption 
yeah. until we saw this point where Rexy wasn't even that much of a challenge for him towards the middle. Yeah. He continued to thrive and abuse the mechanics that Ike really can take uh, full control.